is the pattern or the rate that you're rocking the one that your body wants or one that somehow you think you should be doing? Maybe you want to go slower, maybe faster, maybe bigger, maybe smaller. Feel how you're breathing. And let that fold into this mind-body dance. See if you can just extend this opening, awakening part of the practice to your upper chest, your back, your shoulders, your brain, your face. Include all of you, your arms. And then add to that one last thing, which is when you get to one side, really trust the other side, let it go. So it's not just doing, but it's also allowing, letting the yin fill this. Once those ideas are folded into the practice, you can root yourself on one side, fold the qua, add a little dimensionality, and extend the practice a little bit of a turn and maybe a little bit more of a dynamic swing. Different movements, different pace, but still not going anywhere, just moving to feel and connect. Let your body just gently remind you where you can't feel parts that feel a little disconnected. See if you can fold them in. Including your deep, deep, deep belly. The quality of your arm swing gives you information. Is it naturally hanging and swinging or being held stiffer than it needs to be. No judgment, just being aware. Fingers waking up. Heart relaxing deeply. Breath going in and out. Try not to stare at the computer. Let your head turn with your belly button. Mouth, tongue, and jaw release. And this could be your whole practice sometimes, just doing this for 10 or 15 minutes till you're juicy in as many parts of your body as possible. And just keep letting go. Use the swinging arms to gently bring some more stimulation to the torso. Drumming the chi, hands bouncing off. Table kidneys. Elbow in the way. Good. Letting it rest. Closing your eyes. If that's safe, you can leave them open if you prefer. But just resting towards stillness. 
towards Wu Wei or effortless standing. And without overthinking it, we check for places where there's unconscious effort. Is there any extra work going on around your eyes? Maybe you can just invite a little softening, a little unsquinting or squishing all around the ring muscles of your eyes, behind your eyes, the temples, the forehead. And in that unsqueezing, feeling, flowing, blood, lymph, chi, just starting to spread through those areas a little more freely, beginning to wash out some of the tiredness that can build up there. Nothing you can do, it's more a kind allowing. And that quality is invited to spread through your lips, your teeth, your tongue, your jaw. Deep into your skull structures, left side of your head, right side. Deep into the brain. And maybe with all that, the throat starts to change shape, the neck and the head finds a way to sit on top of your in a different way, less effort. You might notice some extra effort going on in your shoulders that you don't need. Just take a load off, exhale, relax. Any guarding in the biceps, triceps, elbow joints, forearms, wrists, knuckles, fingers. The arms hang freely. It doesn't matter, just being aware. Don't put them any place. Just trust them to land. And you may notice they're different. The left one hangs in a different place than the right one. Feel how your breath fills when you're not pushing it in. Where does a soft breath easily fit? between your cells and your chest. Where doesn't it fit? And what does that reveal about your squeezing patterns? Maybe with each exhale, you can surrender a little more squeezing and the breath will go in with less effort, more freely. Maybe it touches the whole belly, the lower back, pelvic bowl. Maybe not. Each exhale. And let it go a little more. Unraveling through your tailbone, your pubic bone, your hips, your groin. Do we need to squeeze all of those knots in our knickers or can we let them unravel? How does that change the flow of sensations through your legs, your knees, your feet? Can you open your leg pipes all the way to your roots? Like your arms, there are different feelings in your legs sometimes. And just be really curious about your asymmetry. What is it about one leg that lets stuff flow through there more than the other? How do they learn from each other? Slowing ourselves down so that we notice in the noticing, being brave enough to let go and see what happens. And every so often we get pulled into the future thinking about something. We just come back to standing. Breathing. Being amused by our arms and legs. Seeing what we can learn by doing less and less. All right. 
when you're ready, let your eyes open to close. At any time when we're slowing down like that, you need to move a little bit. Just respect that, then come right back to it. Getting close to the end of our cycle, so I'm pushing your ability to just be still. But you guys want to ideally integrate a little bit of just standing still in all your practices. A little vertical pulsing. Just look at your fingers and just bring a little life by maybe 2% effort to draw the knuckles apart. And as they open, they just make more room for your awareness, for your liquids in your body, chi. And so you're just bringing life between all the cells, knuckles, out to the cuticles and fingertips, equally to the backs and fronts of the palms. And then connecting your fingertips deeply through your forearms to your elbows. 3D life, feel like. Releasing the arms coordinates with the slight flex of the ankles and knees. And then the extending arms connect your trunk to your legs and feet. Just like with least, don't go to that place where you grimace because you have an old injury that you might not even be aware of. Just listen, safe, 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 stop the second you feel like you have to guard. And it might be different for your left side or your right side. It might be different day to day. Feel like you can drop deep into your roots so you stretch from way beneath you all the way to your fingertips and crown. And include every cell, just like you did between your knuckles, all your back cells, front cells, core cells. And you can raise your heels one or two cycles if you want to play with your balance and stretch. Good. All right. So we're seeing this pattern over and over again. Tai Chi, Yin Yang. That's what the Yin Yang means, Tai Chi. Chuan means movement or boxing or manifestation of Yin and Yang. One side other side, turn one way, turn the other way, extend your finger a little bit, release it, stretch up, release down, back, front, left, right, breathe in, breathe out, do nothing, do something. So yin yang just keeps showing up over and over again, whether it's a finger or the whole body, same principles. All right, hips. Feel your feet deep in the earth to move your waist. Let your head stay bobolacious on top. Be aware of how you're breathing. And then going the other way. your way to the middle, rest, little spinal cord breathing, elbows back, fingers open, lift the chin slightly, but pause. At this point, you should not be afraid of your balance. So your head's loose, your heart and arms are loose, your kidneys can jiggle a bit, and your feet are not pushing the earth away. So you can be big, but not disconnected from the ground. And then you sit, tuck your chin, your wrists get really soft but not droopy, keep them up there, everybody. Keep your wrists up by your shoulders. Okay, so you're sitting, and then you come up. It's 
same thing. Whether you're feeling the spaces between your lumbar bones or thoracic bones and ribs, or whether you're feeling the more surface tissues, your skin and the fascia around all the muscles. Feel every time you open and close, you start to break down any glued up fabric, any fibrosis, any holding patterns, and you feel your inner ocean or your cosmic WD-40 getting into all these tissues and starting to melt things. More glide, more juiciness. You can feel this in your leg joints and your finger joints. Yin and yang. Hitting bottom when you're ready, letting your arms go, letting your head be heavy. And slowly letting your shoulders settle over your hips and bringing your head to the top, feeling its weight in your belly and legs. A little bit of wispy breathing. And this is a good test. Can you go up without squeezing your neck and tightening up or trying too hard? You just float lightly. Good, everybody. And let's just get a little bit of movement in the shoulders. Like a spring thaw, you breathe a little warm, juicy chi up into your shoulders, neck, head, face. And feel a melt in the top of your head with the skull bones, in the throat, neck, and shoulders, and arms. Oozing through your belly, back, hips, legs, knees, feet, all the way down to the earth. It has to hit bottom. And we drink from that deep well in the earth, bringing it up through new tissues in our legs, touching new places in our belly, back, chest, shoulders. And keep melting so you feel more and more of yourself, more and more of your connection from your head to your roots. Bring the other shoulder forward and all the way up, breathing from the ground up through your system to your brain, face, jaw, neck, back of the head, shoulder blades, and then feel like you can release that whole side, including your arm down to your fingers, including your hips down to your feet, and just paying attention to one half of you. Intuitively, everyone's shapes can be a little different. You have to give a talk, even just a couple words. Sometimes you just practice that. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the kind invitation to be here. Just having that phrase, you say it over and over again. You read it. And then when the time comes, either you can read it with a little bit more ease, or maybe you don't even need to read it because it's learned deeply. It's the same here. You do this phrase over and over and over again, like you mean it, like you feel every part of it. And then someday you're just going to go, oh, I want to feel my whole side and breathe up through it. 
and you're well versed. It's just the pathway has been built, the connections are there. Or if you're feeling comfortable and something startles you and you go, ah, and everything goes up, you know the way back down. You've done this thousands of times. It's like, oh, I've been up tight here. Okay, I know my way by letting go. And I can't not let go of my shoulder if I really want to relax or not let go of my arm or my hip or my leg. It's all connected. So we're teaching ourselves these phrases because they encode something much more important than just moving. Okay? So just compare your sides. Feel how you breathe, feel how you stand. Good. And we'll do the other side next week. So just do it. Not because you're moving meat, but you're exploring yourself. Where is there things hiding and unconscious holding patterns? Where might we just go a little deeper with some healing, nourishing intentions? Side of your face, brain, skull, ear, neck, throat, shoulder, arms, all the way down to your roots. And since the system is so complex, so many layers of pulls and pushes and thoughts and histories and conscious and unconscious traumas, don't be such a smarty pants. Start, but listen, maybe your body will tell you, oh, stay there for a second, that feels good. Or don't try so hard. Or, This time, just doing two or three more to finish up with both shoulders together. <clears throat> and as you do your next two, maybe your body will tell you to do 10% less. I don't know. But don't assume it's going to be the same. Start. And maybe you want more. Maybe you want less. Maybe you want to change how you breathe. come to the front, dragon wags its tail, and bring all of this curiosity. Feel all ten fingers gently open. You feel they connect to all ten toes. Where in your legs might you squeeze less so that that connection is full? Where in your flanks and torso and head? Might you adapt things so the arms connect to your legs? How does the breath interweave with your movements? Does it stay awake? And come back into the center. Palms to your heart, deeply rooted like a tree. Feel your ankles and knees gently open, your legs, your belly, your spine, <clears throat> your neck, shoulders, only to where it's safe. Let your palms spiral outward and enjoy the gentle stretch all the way out. At some point you shift to letting go without collapsing. Connect to the earth again, wrist cross over the line. And 
surprise yourself. Just let things shape you as opposed to you shaping them. Front of you, the back of you, every cell. Let it go. So that the next one is a little more. Organic, not being shaped by the past. Two more cycles. Take your time. See if there are any parts of your legs that feel left out. Belly back. Chest neck. Segments of your arms to every finger. As time as you hit bottom, resting. And staying restful as your arms float out. Stay grounded like a tree. So you're not efforting here. But your hands start to get excited about connecting to this deeply healing, nourishing chi from nature. And your fingers commingle in it. And they feel even more awake at the deepest cellular level. And they start to gather this and not only bathe the top of your head, face, and skull, and hair follicles with it, but it goes into every blood cell, muscle, bone, nerve, and organ, deep into your head, lips, teeth, jaw, and neck, guiding it through your shoulders, chest, heart, lungs, back, front, breasts, solar plexus, all your microbiome, your guts, your gut brain, your kidneys, your groin, your reproductive lines, genitals, is being bathed. All your tired light cells and strengthening, awakening light fabric, knees, feet, deep into the earth. And then you do this a few times on your own. Bring in the good stuff in. But without overthinking it, like a mesh, just cleaning out all the karma. No longer need to shut tiredness, tension, old stories. Just clean it out of your blood, muscle, bones, and organs. Like a French coffee press. All the brain things you don't need. Guide it out into the earth for recycling. Hit bottom this time, just resting. No rush, take time. And when you are finished, just find your way to a place of sitting and resting. Find a way you can sit with your feet flat on the floor, palms resting, body still upright. Mouth, tongue, and jaw released. Eyes are closed unless you prefer them to be open, that's fine. Okay. 
and we're not even trying to meditate that. We're just resting. Got the physical body, trusting, letting go. Relaxing. Thoughts, taking a look, rest. Just maybe letting your mind spend more time feeling than thinking. And letting your breath relax. With each exhale, Take another load off, letting all the cells in your feet exhale. And it feels like you're loosening up the laces of really tight shoes or taking off some tight shoes. And the vibrations have more room to vibrate. The blood lymph and chi circulates within and between cells more freely. Each exhale, just permission to unsqueeze, to to rest deeply, to trust that the coast is clear. It takes time to find all those places between your ankle bones and your shin tissues. And then even when you find them, to coax those cells and processes to trust, let it go, but you get better at it. Same with your upper legs, pelvis, deep guts, lower back, groin. The heart area, the chest, shoulders, and arms. The jaw face, the eyes, the ears, the neck, the brain. And as they wake up and unsqueeze, you can start to breathe that really nice chi from nature right through your skin into every cell. Your feet, your belly, your back, your arms, your whole body breathes. Good stuff coming in, old stuff leaving, drifting away, and dissolving. Patient, not forcing any controlled breathing rhythm. Respectful. And just letting your whole body breathe, feeling renewed by the breath. Today, I want to just shift the breathing as we finish to a little bit more of a focus. And it's not really a breathing exercise. We're just using the breath to touch places inside, just like we raise our shoulder and that helps us feel. So here, I want you to breathe into your belly. The belly button is sort of the middle of it, but you're not particularly focusing there. And as you feel your belly expand like a dome a little bit, notice if the places you feel are similar, or can you feel beneath your belly, an inch or two or three down to your pubic bone, in the same way you feel above your belly, up to your solar plexus? Do you feel to the left more in general, or to the right more? And I, there's no right or wrong. You exhale, you relax. And then when you take another one of these curious breaths, aiming towards the whole dome, without forcing or shaping it too much, where does it easily go? 
where doesn't it go? And then when you exhale, maybe you can soften things, relax. And each time your mind and breath and the tissues adapt to this wave, maybe there's a fuller sense of being able to touch and feel more of your abdomen, the front of your abdomen. If you start thinking, then that's different than just feeling. If you start regulating the breath, that's different than just being curious every so often where the waves go. And it's just as important to take a little time in the exhale to just soften. Now I want you to shift your attention as if you have a belly button on your spine, same height as your front one. And just feel like the lower back can gently swell, just like the front did more easily. But notice, does the breath penetrate as far? Does the density of the muscles limit that? Does it go into your left side more than your right side, the lower part of the up more than the upper part? How deeply can you feel touched by this breath? And when you exhale, can you soften, relax, rest, such that the next breath has less resistance? Your neck is really loose, so not thinking too much. Your shoulders and chest are relaxed, butt and feet are resting, arms are resting. It's like you're going into a basement with a flashlight. Each breath is shining a little conscious light to the tissues it interacts with. And you can slightly point your flashlight to different areas to touch those places. You're not pushing the breath in, you're just waiting for it to be invited in. And then finally, as you breathe in, it's like filling a glass with light-filled water. You feel like your front and back domes are going to be touched because the, what you're filling the glass with fills the whole bottom. And again, you're just curious where it easily goes, where it doesn't go. Each exhale, let it go a little deeper, a little softer. No force for the mouth, tongue, and jaw relax, shoulders relax, eyes relax. Just noticing where that flashlight lights up. And with a little curiosity where it does over time. Inviting it to spread. Good. And when you're ready, you can just like gently come back let your eyes stay soft. And you can keep breathing a little bit. Don't stop. Okay. We did a couple of different things today in the preliminary Qigong calisthenics. Anyone have any observations or questions or comments? Peter? Just Jim. Hey, Jim. Hi. Uh, a couple of things. One uh, specific in, in doing the uh, dragon wags its tail. Uh, the last few times I've been working, I've been really aware of my shoulders and uh, I noticed a tendency to try to keep the shoulders more parallel to the floor. And, and it was an unconscious thing, but now that I've started sort of consciously letting that go, it's mm -hmm. freed up a, a, a whole upper body and it's a lot less uh, strain. So I just, mm -hmm. that's a good. Observation. 
So I just want to say something about that. It's not clear whether it's an old injury that you regard, you know, that maybe unconsciously, some people have vestibular issues, just over time, your vestibular inner ear. So if you go on a roller coaster, you really challenge your vestibular system. Most of us, as we get older, don't like going upside down and twisting. And when you move your head in certain planes, it can instill a little bit of that instability. And so people with vestibular systems are the way their head moves relative to their shoulders and eyes and slowing it down a little bit, just like you have and noticing it's okay to tip, you know, um, and that you can find other ways to stay stable and not lose your balance. Um, will touch those places, but that's one of the things we work a lot with, with people with vestibular issues, um, is just retraining all that guarding. Okay. And it's going to make you a better driver because what happens over time <laughs> when you don't do this is you see it. I was just in Miami and there's a lot of people that drive like this and, and, you, and they don't want to turn their head and you're, you're going, that's scary for all the other people on the road with them. But you, you know, so that ability to, to separate those is good. Okay. Uh, the other thing I, uh, subject I'd like for you to talk about, um, in uh, a little bit more in depth is um, our, the, I don't know how to phrase it, self-awareness, uh, basically, and, and how subjective that is <laughs> um, by nature, but, but it's, um, I, I often, I mean, I, from one day to another, um, my perception of how I'm doing uh, and it, you know, I know there's an implied judgment there, but it, it's, uh, it varies dramatically and what I'm capable of doing, what I'm, uh, what I need to do is varies day to day and, and it, it, you know, uh, even more so than that. But I just like to hear your perspective on that. Please. Yeah, I, I won't go far there because it's such a vast topic. Um, but all of what we're trying to do, Jim, and I think is obvious is become more self-aware. Uh, what does that mean? I, for me right now, it's um, the first step is, is this just a thought or does it have embodiment? Like if I feel like I'm tense or nervous emotionally, where in my body do I feel that? It just all of a sudden becomes a bit more concrete and tangible to work with. Um, do my shoulders move? or not. And that gives you a different way of self-awareness than just wondering in your head, you know, what's going on. The next level is applying it. If I stand on one leg, am I less likely to fall over? <laughs> um, if I interact with somebody and we're playing Tai Chi together, um, what happens? If I have a conversation with somebody, you know, do I still, you know, do all the patterns, or am I willing to listen more or have a two-way flow? So that's the next level. How does it manifest? And you get feedback in different ways and just wondering if this is just all in your head. So I think Tai Chi gives you that. It embodies things so you can distill some subjectivity, but then there's the, the test. Do I balance better? Do I walk better? Do I have more energy during the day? Do I piss fewer people off? That's applied self-awareness. <laughs> um, all right, so that's a good segue to, let's see if this works. Let's do some balance work, okay? Both, it's simultaneously training and, uh, and feedback, right? So I want to just go through the balance step one more time, and then we'll come back to integrating that with the belly breathing and stuff like that. But notice we're focusing a lot on the belly, feeling the breath there, waking this up. This is our center of gravity. It's where the bottom and the top intersect the meat. Um, it's where we have back problems and digestive problems and all sorts of um, 
traumas in this region, unfortunately. So um, we really need to open this up. And our center of gravity is going to be so much better with this opening and feeling a little bit more alive. When this gets shut off, um, we run into problems. Okay? So let's, um, part of that's going to be strength. Just you guys need to build some strength in your legs and dynamic strength. Okay? So if you need to hang on to something, you can have something nearby or you can use some furniture. We'll do a little bit of tapping to start with. Okay? If you're standing on your right leg, your left toes are forward. And immediately before you start, look at the fear in your neck. And go, oh, okay, caught that one. I'm aware now, not just a thought. I know where it is. And it may not go away, but you can feel it because they're holding in your chest and kidneys. And are you pushing the ground away or are you collaborating with it, letting go and receiving it? And are you breathing? Okay. So the goal here is to bring this awareness into this activity. So you do a little tap, three, or you can do big ones that are more wobbly that challenge your support. To the side, don't give yourself a cramp. It's just a little touch. Feel like you can stay aware of the Tai Chi principles, breathing, your neck, your heart, back. Crossing over, let's see. Good. And rest. Shake it out a little bit. Shake out the way you were standing on this side. So the, if you do the same little tap every time, that's fine to get going. But you can play with it, improvise. That's going to challenge your support in a different way. What are you doing with your arms? Back. Side. And front. Good. Shake it out. And just breathe into your front belly button, that whole dome. Soften it, relax, let things settle. Breathe into your back one. Let it relax and settle. Breathe into the front and back, but try not to tighten your neck or legs. Soft, wispy breath. So as you bring consciousness into this area, it brings consciousness into your center of gravity and also any blocks between the top and bottom. So we really have to wake this up just for physical balance. Okay, uh, what's the next piece? Uh, deep pulsing. So you drop into the ground, bend that leg a little bit, grow your skyscraper girders that connect to the center of the earth, boom. And that frees this heel to float up. And you notice any mistrust in your neck, chest, shoulders, jaw. And then you shift to this leg. Let your skyscraper girder go deep into the earth, connect. And that frees the other heel to float up without tightening the neck or wrap the shoulders. And then you bring your arms into it. Same heel floats up, same hand. Just keep washing open that connection to the ground. Through your guts, through your hips and knees. And you become the yin yang symbol. One side floating and expanding, the other one deepening. Yes. The heavier you get, the lighter you get.
your toe stays down here, so you don't have to lift much. It's really safe, just the heel. You guys can practice that and the first one a little longer than we did today. So now we put um, our weight on our right leg just to coordinate ourselves together. Left toes are back and um, right arm is forward. No, left toes are back, left arm is forward. I'm doing that mirror image. And when you release the back leg, your arms switch. So whichever leg is forward, the opposite arm is forward. And Pause for a second, wherever you are, and just breathe into your belly. That's got to be the heavy part, not the head, not the shoulders, not the chest. So the more relaxed that belly is, the more you receive this weight. And then you feel like you have a bowling ball in your belly. And you're much more centered because you just keep relaxing the guts, jaw releasing. The more free the arms swing, the less tension in the chest and shoulders. The chest, you're just trusting the swing, the ropes, the little rock on the end of it. Breathe gently. And let your supporting leg, the earth pipe, go all the way down to the middle of the earth. You feel really rooted. The other leg can swing. And it could drag along the floor. That's not too much friction. You can lift it off the floor. It's hard to do that without tightening, but that's good too. Relax all your fingers. Good. Switch to the other leg. Scoot on your left side. Right toes are back. Um, Right arm is forward, switch. And then again, like you have a bowling ball in your belly, gently relaxed weight that comes out of your head and chest. And this is hard, so it won't be too frustrating. Just you might have to break it down. You might have to hold on to something. You might have to really drag your foot for stability for a while. Even just getting the pattern is tricky. But you, all of you want to be letting go of your head and chest. Trusting your arms to swing. And this is strength and balance training for your supporting leg. Not static strength, but dynamic strength, adapting to all the different demands on your balance. Good. Centering. Sitting in your qua. Really appreciating that you don't have to do much on one leg. Grow some deep roots in both legs and then just swing. Heads precariously balanced so the weight of your brain, jaw, back of your head, lips, throat, all can be felt being received by your belly. Your heart's weight, your chest, your shoulders, your back. Anything that's being held up and tight, being given permission to melt down and accumulate in your lower body through your legs and to the ground as well. So you're getting bottom heavy. You're touching your breath with the breath that we learned, touching the belly that is. And focusing a lot on the exhale to soften so the next breath is less effortful and what's melting in your upper body has more room to accumulate in your belly. So this is physically centering and centering the breath. And then the more subtle, we center the heart mind, they call it in Chinese, healing work. And for that, and just imagine listening to the earth with your kidney ears, picking up any rumblings of spring way, way down beneath your feet. 
the more your lights relax, the more that information can be sensed and transmitted to your belly. <clears throat> but nothing going on between your ears or your heart. Using your gut brain to just listen, interpret, adapt. As we would say in Brooklyn, getting out of your freaking head. Just dropping. Shoulders getting tired, you can do less. Your arms trust letting go, your jaw, your head. Your belly, buttocks, your legs. It's simple enough that you can catch yourself. Good. Head. Head rest. Hands over the top. Blending front, back, top, bottom, all the way down through your tired legs to the ground. A little earth up from the bottom up. Rinse. Shift to your right, uh, left leg, and start a little wave hands like clowns. Like you're a Tai Chi master. And you're doing it from your guts, not from your face, not from your shoulders, not from your arms. You're breathing there, you're moving from there. You're letting your arms feel connected to your belly. Improvise. My old studio had a plaque from Martha Graham quote, dance like no one's watching. If you can let your feet stay juicy, and connect the juiciness of your legs all the way up into your lower back and groin and belly. Fill all of those places that need a little nourishing, nurturing, rehydrating. And let all your fingertips get juicier, like the flow. This connects all the way from your heart, all the way out to your fingers, backs of the hands, fronts of arms. And your spine is hanging like a necklace of pearls. So the throat's open, the jaw, the face, even that's letting life flow through there. Good. Come back to the center, palms to your shoulders, let them float down. Shift to your right leg, left toes out. Step forward with your right leg. And shift and push, open your hands. Relax back. Find a loop, trust your inner Tai Chi master. No one's watching. Breathe into your belly a few times so you, that's always command center. Not moving from your head, not moving from your shoulders, not moving from your arms. But just feel that your legs and belly connect and integrate through the upper structures. And it feels good. It's a massage. And the way you move today exactly is going to be different than everyone else. So today we're not working on me watching you and telling you to do this or that. It's more like, ooh, yeah, that feels really good for my back. Just the right stretch. And my knees actually feel pretty good because I'm not overdoing it or listening to what pattern makes them feel most at ease. My feet, my shoulders, my neck. Any parts you feel a little left out, just be curious. Good. 
This time as you shift back, turn your front toes out a little bit, step through with your back leg and continue. Same thing, totally different, the other side. Are you telling your body what to do or are you listening to what your body wants to do? This time as you shift back, pause. Shake it out a little bit. Raising the power. One, two, three, it's really just let it go. Two. And let everything go. On one, your ankles and knees bend, your back stays upright, but your arms go all the way out and come up to shoulder height in front of you on one, closer. Two, you stretch your fingertips a little bit, your palms, the webbing, straighten your legs. And on three, I'm saying just be sure everything lets go. Again, trust that inner Tai Chi master. Don't tell your body what to do. Let your body also tell you what to do. A little bit of a collaboration. Touch your belly with your breath a few times just so you don't forget it. Cross your wrists, raise one leg. You can just leave the toe down if you want, or if you can bring it up a little bit for a second grade and then stop. Release the arm with your leg. And feel your bones rattle a little bit. Wrist crossing, you can alternate one on top, the other on top. And over the top, just moving things out. Clearing anything you know you don't need, giving it to the earth. Drink a little earth chill. And hands to your belly. Massage your belly off. Massage your little back a little. Work your hands a little. Make them warm. and see how far into your abdomen you feel this vibration going. Maybe mix this with your breath. Good.
like they used to say on car talk, you've wasted another perfectly good hour, some change doing nothing. All right, anyone have any observations related to the practice, questions, comments? Yeah, go ahead, um, Paige, Sunita, I, I can't see who's wants to go. Can I ask quickly about the belly breathing? Mm -hmm. That's something that I've never really understood. And even today, you know, you said feel it, I'm hard time feeling anything in my cheek. Good. That's a great start. So make a little bullseye dart dartboard. And your goal is not to get the the dart in the middle. Your goal is to actually fill all of the pieces of the pie <laughs> um, of the dartboard. And just as we sit here now, right, without looking too far into the computer, just sit. And take in the however you want to sit, doesn't matter. You can do this while you you know pick your nose. Just feel where that breath goes, which pieces of the pie get touched as you aim towards that whole front dome. And you might find none of it, you might find some of it. As you exhale, you soften, like blowing up the same balloon a million times. Every time it gets a little easier because all the cross links in the rubber start to, but you've been there, you've touched part places. And then you might go, well, how come you don't like to cross that line into the next neighborhood? And you breathe towards there, but you don't push it in. You go, can I be invited in? Can I, and you're really patient. And there's nothing magical about it. It just takes practice and um, taming your monkey mind they say in Chinese medicine and simul and this serves both because if you just fully focused on feeling your breath go to a place then you can't be thinking about all too many other things and if you start drifting like oh yeah no sorry breathing in my belly right now and it's just a way of like a puppy like heal come back in the portion of it, the whole you know big parts of, of very traditional Vipassana meditation and some Buddhist training and, and secular is around noticing the breath, feeling it as it passes the upper lip or in and out of your chest. Here we add that paying attention to some functionality. We're actually starting to shift the system specifically using the breath. So you get both the attention and the attention training along with the functional awakening of this huge region of their body. Good. All right, any other observations, questions? Practically, on a very practical uh, administrative level, is there anyone on this call that did not receive an email saying that the new cycle is going to start soon? Okay, Marianne. Okay, so Marianne, JB, I know JB, you're in our system. You've been there for a while. So my guess is the, our emails are going to your spam box or something like that. Um, uh, so check that. If after checking in various places where it could be hidden or maybe you missed it, let me know if you're not getting emails and we'll make sure that you're in our system and it's not on our end. But anyway, we are starting up again the week of April 4th, um, and so um, those of you planning on continuing, uh, please get your registration in. So That'll you sent out, out the link? Is that what it is? No, scheduled? no the oh, link okay. won't come to the very, like, two days beforehand. We do that to get you anxious so that you really benefit from Tai Chi once we start. No, it's just easier for us to wait for everybody who's registered to be registered and then they send the link as opposed to just sending it individually to everyone who registers. And so it makes our life easier for people to do it in advance. Is there I think a it's problem? Getting, it's getting easier because even my sister managed to register. 
speaking of that, is there a, a family, uh, any kind of family discount, or is it per individual name for any classes? Um, we have a family policy in place. We've never turned anyone away because of limited resources or anything like that. So if there are any circumstances that, um, you know, require consideration of that, let me know and um, we take it on a case by case basis. I have a question that's not administrative. So when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I don't like the administrative. <laughs> when I struggle because when we're swinging with one leg, you say to feel the girder and feel it here in our our abdomen and um, in our gut, and I have trouble feeling it. Would it help to hold something heavy at that level to get the feeling of being grounded, or is there a secret? I I don't know. I think it's going to be trial and error. What I mean by feeling heavy there is that you feel something there, like and the weight is not in your head and chest, but it's as if the honey has returned to your belly. And there's just, there's a sense of substance there, a relaxation, a fullness. Um, so you don't need to then put a dense bowling ball in there or anything like that. It, it's it maybe not a good analogy for some of us. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if you need to, I think just keep breathing and softening and it'll, it'll start waking up. Maybe just standing on one leg and releasing and then just feeling that weight and then shifting to the I, other side before I do stuff? I think that if I understand what you're asking, Patricia, I don't think it's dependent on being on one leg. I think what you're asking for is what's that feeling of being in your belly? And then the question is, can you maintain that when you're on one leg? So the place to practice it might be swinging to center. Right? Because this is unthreatening and you can notice I'm not swinging to center up here. Now I'm dropping, you know, I'm not bracing my legs when I'm swinging. I can let go and I actually feel some connection to the earth, whatever metaphor, like listening to it, or breathing with it. Right. So okay. I think that's the trick. And then can you do it on one leg? And then can you do it while you're doing Tai Chi? <laughs> and it's almost, it stays there. You know, it's just, that's, that's the base camp. Okay. Okay. So what you call quantity. Not, it's not everything. I mean, it goes out of there and it comes back, but it's, yeah. You don't okay. want to like have no blood in your face. Um, yeah. I'll give it a try. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Peter. Yep. Uh, I just wanted to <laughs> tell everybody about this super cool movie I saw. It's a documentary. It's called The Alpinist. Uh, it's a climbing movie about this guy named Mark andre Le Leclerc. And it just reminded me so much. He does like free climbing. Um, and um, it reminded me so much of the things that you talk about. Um, I don't know, just how he does what he does and his just his person, I don't know, just reminded me so much of, of this. So it's interesting. It's a, an amazing movie. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I saw it. It's, yeah, it is, it is good. Um, I don't cool? recommend everyone in this class start free climbing though. Oh my God. <laughs> I was getting nauseous just looking. <laughs> but doesn't it kind of remind you a little bit of out of just sort of not I, I think yeah, I think many of these really, really fundamental principles apply to everything. You know, mm -hmm. you know, don't try too hard. Keep checking in if you think you know that what you're doing is really right. Um, include as much of you as possible, because if you start excluding parts of your feelings or your body, it's not the way you were designed to move and be. You know, so, there are a lot of really fundamental things there. Yeah. That's the nice thing about Tai Chi is you can take these philosophical or psychological ideas and actually pragmatically test them, play with them, implement them, gives you something to do. You know, the 
philosophical books say, if you want to lead, first follow. If you want to go to the right, go to the left. And like, it's like, what the F does that mean? <laughs> but then you start shifting and you realize if you go to your right, your left side starts floating and you, you actually can embody those things and, and explore them a little bit more tangibly. Good. I think we're waiting for your Brooklynese translation of the Tai Chi's classics, <laughs> the Tai Chi classics. <laughs> well, you're, you're hearing them, and that's why I don't record them. <laughs> yeah, there is that whole, um, I won't say anything because you have your daughter there, but there's, um, there's a whole list of like the religions of the world, all translated as doo doo happens, you know. Um, so. Anyway, they're, they're pretty funny. All right, I'll see some of you guys on the other channel. I think we have, I, I honestly, I'm sorry, I don't remember the schedule, but I think there's still a class next Sunday, right? That's yes. part of the cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I hope to be here. All right. Yeah. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.